Hey guys, if you haven't already, give the video a like. Subscribe to my channel. This is a What If series and I'll be doing more down the road. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Hey guys, welcome back to What If Deku Had the Renegade Part 4. So let's get into the story. So we left off with the entrance exam coming to a close. And it's some things that I want to touch up. Some things that I want to add about Deku's body and Deku's training abilities. Okay, so Deku right now, he's compatibly fit. More fit than his original counterpart. So he's not as big as Mirio. But he's like, say for example, okay, so you got a Mirio. Put it like this. Put it like this. Ain't no big as Mirio, but he like, okay. He's as big as Goku. And Goku is not that jacked. Only when Goku like uses his power to when he buffs up or he goes Super Saiyan or something like that. But Goku is necessarily not that jacked because Mirio looks huge. Anyway, so put it like this. Goku, I mean, now Deku is somewhere around Goku's body level. Like body fitness, if you get what I mean, if you know what I mean by that. Anyway, so let's get into the end. Let's get into the show. So, after the entrance exam, Deku was in a grassy field, just training, honing his chakra, focusing on his powers and everything. And Deku, with his eyes, it was nothing that Deku couldn't master. It was nothing that Deku couldn't do. So, Deku was just, like, motioning himself with different fighting styles, learning each curve and everything. While he wasn't necessarily perfect at him, it only took him, like, at least two days to at least master each and each individual fighting style that he found interest in whether it was muay thai judo karate taekwondo wing chung any kind of fighting style in there that deku wanted to master that he felt that it was going to help him in the near future he did it so for now deku was just sitting in a meditated position and Honing his inner power with one for all. He was just honing it so he could master more percentage of it by staying in the power long or keeping up more percentage. Like if he's saying he activated 25%, he would spend at least 10 hours in 25%. Or if he activated at least 40%, he would spend more more days like more hours in 40 percent like say for example he'll keep it activated while trying to control his power or trying to control the momentum of his power because if you would uh realize that when all might was in the uh well when he was going against deku and bakugo and bakugo and deku had to try to escape or get out the grounds or get through the exit gate to win you realize when all might punched it was like a fucking hurricane tore through that city so Deku knows the destructive power of one for all and he wants to try to harness that and control it so that if he ever used it or if, if his friends were ever in the way he would know how to hold back and protect them so that they wouldn't get hurt or damaged so that's what he's been doing he's just been meditating and trying to harness control of one for all and this is proving very good training for him like mental training and overall body performance training to get Deku to use his overall strength to the fullest extent of his power so while Deku's doing all that from out in the distance you see a masked man who's just standing on a tree just analyzing and looking at Deku and saying this boy he looks very useful in the near future I have to keep seeing his potential before the war begins. The war of all will begin soon and I will have those eyes. I will have this world. I will turn this world into a world without pain, only happiness. I will put this world into a dream. You will all see. There will be no death. There will be no loss only happiness and then he goes to disappear and as Deku finishes his training All Might comes up into the scene and All Might looks at Deku and says hmm I can see that you've been working very well young Midoriya I can see that all of your battle power is increased your training is paying off subnin well exponentially well it's paying off at an extraordinary rate for you Izuku Midoriya so, young Midoriya, I know that you said that you didn't feel like the need to use the animal path, but let me show you something. 
I want you to summon one of those beasts. And Izuku goes to say, it's not that I don't want to use the animal path. It's just that I kind of don't find use for it as of right now. It's nothing. It's like I don't find use of it right now. There's no like big gigantic threat that requires me to summon a huge gigantic beast to destroy my opponent. And All Might goes to say, well, you're right about that. You're right about that. So let's go into this like this right here. I want you to summon one of those beasts. And Deku instantly just summons the flying bird. And he says, this one is more useful for me because I use it to travel around. It helps me get from plan A to plan B. Keeping this which if I say that in a more reasonable terms or in a more like a term that people would understand instead of saying it that logical way, it helps me get to and from home and school and training with you or with anybody else. But anyway, all might. I think I'm going to go ahead on for now. I'm done training. Oh, and I just want you to know that I've kind of almost got 40% of one for all down. Due to all the meditating and power control I've been doing with this power, I think it'll be easier to control 35%. I mean, at least 30%. If I push it to 35%, my body will start to strain. But I think I'm almost there at controlling half of this power. We'll see what the future holds as Deku just instantly body flickers away from the uh, grassy field. And All Might just smiles as he picked the perfect successor for his power. The next day, all of them come in and they all choose their hero costumes and all their hero names and everything. Deku, on the other hand, while he did keep his original look, it was more suited for like a tactical look or something like that. So keep in mind, like at this point, Deku already, Deku had like not the short gloves. He had the long gloves that was supporting him. And then he know when he fought, um... All Might, like, gave him them gloves, whatever them gloves called, that helps him control at least 30 or 20 percent. Whatever the gloves he gave Deku that he had in the movie of Hero Rising. And if you haven't seen that, I'm not going to spoil any more for you. But whatever the gloves that All Might has gave, like, gave Deku, he uses those now with the elongated gloves that he has. And his battle suit is more, like, tactical. It's still the same color and everything. He just, he has... This collar around his neck is more like a purplish, blackish look. And his costume is more like, let's say, that it's the same color and everything, but the mask he got on is purplish black because Deku uses it as a, uh, what do I want to say about it? What he uses that? He asks the girl that makes his machines to like make him like a mask that will be able to sniff out any opponent or locate chakra in a nearby in a nearby radius or long radius with help with his eyes. So she creates that and it got, and when he puts it on his neck, all he has to do is activate his like chakra and the thing like the mask starts glowing like a purplish glow like an aura around the mask. And when he starts to look around, he can sense chakra. I know he can sense chakra with the Renegon and everything, but this helps it up to a godly level. Like not too much of a godly level, but it amps it up. But it does have a drawback, seeming as if it will strain his eyes if he use it too much. Like, you know when Sasuke and Aruto are fighting and Sasuke went careless and used too much chakra? Yes, Deku has that drawback too. So if he used too much chakra, he won't be able to use his Renegon abilities. Like, say, for example, that's why he's training so hard to gain the abilities, like, to basically, in the near future, if he ever fights a strong opponent, he will be ready for that strong opponent. He doesn't want to have no kind of weakness or be beaten. He wants to live up to the expectations of All Might. He wants to be the number one hero that never loses or never backs down from a fight. And that's Deku. So they all pick out their hero names and all that kind of stuff. And they all pick out their costumes. And All Might tells them to get ready for the battle trial arc. So when the battle trial arc begins, Deku and Ochaku are really looking around and everything. Chaku's a big help for this. As she can sense where Tenya Ida is. And she can tell that Bakugo is coming directly towards their way. And Deku instantly tells Ochaku, listen Ochaku, I need you to go handle Tenya Ida. With your eyes, I bet you can approve to be no problem for him. And 
I bet you have yet to show me some of those Hyuga skills that you have in your arsenal. And she would look at Deku and says, hmm, I think I can show a few. But I, I indeed know that Tinya Ida is fast, but I don't think he can keep up with everything that I've learned from my clan. Hmm, <laughs> we'll shall see. I hope, it is, I hope it proves to be a good battle. I don't want to embarrass him, though. Anyway, see you later, Deku. As she instantly body flickers away and Bakugo just shoots a huge fireball at Deku, which Deku looks at and counterattacks it with a water style, what a water ball. Like, he created a water style water ball jutsu, the same size as the fireball, and then both of them collided, creating a big, huge, like, blast of smoke and mist. As Bakugo comes out of the smoke and mist and instantly punch Deku in the face, which Deku instantly eats and instantly counter counterattacks uh, Bakugo back with a punch to the stomach, and then he grabs his arm and slams him down on the ground like he did in the anime. And Deku just saying, "Come on, Bakugo, I know that's not all you have." And Bakugo instantly looks at Deku and says, "You damn nerd!" As they both get ready for their battle. And with Bakugo and Deku trading blow for blow, Deku seeming as if he's getting upper hand on Bakugo, in which he is, because Deku not only can see Bakugo's movements and his counterattack, well, like his speed and everything, but Deku with his eyes ends the battle re relatively quickly. While it was a good battle, nonetheless, but Deku says this is get this is getting out of hand. You're with the anger that you have, Bakugo, you might destroy this building. Jesus Christ. Detroit, pull. And Texas, 8% smash. As he just smashed Bakugo down to the ground. And Bakugo was unconscious. Literally unconscious. Bakugo didn't move. And we now fast back. Now we go to Ochaku versus Tanya Ida. Well, she used the 8 trigram 64 palms on Tinya Ida, and now he can't move. She shut down all his chakra points, and he cannot move. So now he's on the ground looking at her, saying, what the hell did you, what did you do to me? And she goes to say, well, I shut down your chakra points. I, I didn't even see, I couldn't even counterattack your attacks. They were so fast. Jesus, uh, what kind of training did you do? And she would go to say, well, I blame my clan for this kind of training. Anyway, it looks like we win, and the battle trial was over. As you know everything else, Todoroki, all the other classes, they went relatively the same. And don't worry, when we get to the UA, USJ Sports Festival, not Sports Festival, USJ ARC, when the villains are raid and all that kind of stuff, you're going to see Todoroki do some amazing things. And it's going to be mostly Bakugo, Todoroki, and Deku teaming up against the Nomu. And yes, the Nomu. Alright, anyway, I'm sorry that this video came out so, so late. So it was a month ago when I did the third part to this series, and now it's now... I have no excuse. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video for what it was worth. I will be releasing more. I will try to be consistent with my videos and everything. I'm just trying to find an inspiration or more what else to do and more ideas to talk about. But anyway, without any further ado, you guys have a good day, a good night, and you already know the deal. Plus Ultra. Good night, guys.